sweetie, guess what? <laughs> I was just on the, um, on the computer. I was watching some of the Massey Boys videos and they were talking about this fluid art experience that's in Dallas. I mean, <laughs> they're gonna be some of my favorite artists like the Massey Boys and Mina Villegas and Sarah Mack. <laughs> Kathleen from Cos Creations, and they're even having a big Texas barbecue on Friday night. I'm, yes, it, it's November 12th and 13th. I definitely want to go. I'm going to do this registration right now, and I'm going to be there. I'm so excited. Well, hello, friends. Thanks for joining me today. I just wanted you to see how beautiful it is today in Tucson slash Oro Valley, Arizona. So today we are going to do a, another pour based on the first video. And with that, I'm going to put the description of the paints and the order in which I put them in the cup so as to save a little time. I will have already flooded my canvas and then we'll go. See you at the table. Before I start flooding the canvas and layering my cup, I want to give a shout out to Loli F.A. Oh my gosh. I love their pads. Since I'm back in the dining room pouring while we rebuild our studio, I have the jumbo one and it covers almost the entire table. But I love them. They clean up beautifully. I I also want to give a shout out to Molly's Artistry. Not only is she an amazing artist, but she makes these wonderful stands. This is the Sparkle Splat. All right. Got some bubbles. Good for you, actually. I'm just going to pop those. Oh, we see them. Oh, I see them. Huh. I love this. That's kind of cool. All right, so let me just check something here. I don't want that. Oh, <laughs> nasty little booger. Okay, let's start tilting this. See where we go, just to get some of that off. Oh, this is, I think I put way too much blue, but you know what? <clears throat> It is what it is. It's an opportunity. And that's what really this is all about. It's an opportunity to use your imagination, have a blast, enjoy what happens afterwards. And like Jilly Cube says a lot, it's just paint. Just enjoy. And that's why I like it so much. I got paint on my gloves, Jeremy. <laughs> okay, now we're going to torch this a tad. And you know what? I gotta say, it's Sunday fun day. I'm having a little wine. Oh yeah. All right, torch it again. You may get some cells on this since there are a lot of metallics in here. Oh, oh boy, did they pop up fast. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm not crazy about this where I dribbled, so I'm going to tilt some of that off because I don't want a lot of really weird squiggly lines. No, maybe we'll wait. I don't want to lose any of the other stuff, so I think we'll wait until we play with our marble. I really love 
wiping my hands on an apron, but I didn't wear an apron today. It's just my paint dress. Okay. So, should we use the big one or the little one? Or maybe both. We're gonna try the big one. There seems to be enough paint on here. So, you know what? Let's just go for it. If it's too heavy, we'll change. And I may speed this process up in the video when I finally post it, just so it's not too long. I am moving it a little faster than I did yesterday. Look at that big one, it does give it weight. So that's something to remember. Now, if your paints are too thin and you don't have enough, I mean, it might look like enough on your canvas. However, you can tell right away if they're too thin, if your marble starts bringing up and bearing the canvas. Right now, because I use that brown base, it's picking up some of that, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. We're not gonna do as much marbling as yesterday because I really wanted just to give you an idea of something that can be a little simpler. Oh gosh, my nose is itching, sorry. Come back here, marble. <laughs> I kind of like that negative space in the corners, just to bring that brown out. Now those little drips from the end of the cup, they're actually blending pretty nicely. See, now I started getting, I started going down a little too far onto the canvas, okay? So that's telling me that is telling me that Paints are thin enough, but the marble might have been a little bit heavy once you get to that point. So what I want to do is just start here and just do a couple more and see what happens with the smaller and lighter marble. Yeah, that's not going down to the canvas at all, which is great. And it does make a little more delicate effect. want to slide off a little bit on the busy part at the bottom. Let's just see what happens. Add a little of the colors onto the corner. Ooh, I'm liking this. Not sure about this though. It seems a little busy compared to the rest of it. So I think we're going to try tilting. I'm going to try. I know. It's like you guys are right here. I'm going to tilt off a little bit from that bottom area. And the paint's not moving that fast. So that tells me that, you know, it will, it should dry pretty well in terms of not having a lot of paint on it. Did I mention I added some GAC to the paints? I think I did. Let's just take a little off of this. Sorry if you can't see that. I should have turned the canvas around a little bit. I'm learning. This is only my second video. I do want to stretch these out just a little bit in case there's some really cool cells. But I'm really liking this a lot. Definitely use more blue than I thought. I've got to remember it can get bossy. But it is so beautiful it's hard not to like it. Now there's still quite a bit moving here. Might open up to some cells. There's no silicone in any of these paints, but stretching them out does help a lot with the cell creation. Let's go down to this corner a little bit. I'm not crazy about that totally green bikini corner. As Karen of Waterfall Acrylics calls it, she hates bikini corners. She's so funny. It's still moving a fair amount. We're just going to go back to the side a little more, kind of reposition that blue, maybe a little more toward the center. Get rid of some of these. So let me step back for a second. 
mom's nodding. He likes it. I'm not sure about this part. It's a lot. I think I can afford to take a, because there is some more that can come off. So I'm just going to try it just a little bit going this way. Much better. All right, what do I do here? Get set. So, I'm just going to torch it. I'm going to clean up the edges here. Push my gloves off, Jeremy. Sort of. <laughs> got some of the brown as I'm looking in the mirror there at the back. We have some of the brown showing. I think I will take some of the drips. I'll either take some of the drips or I'll just take some of the brown here. Oh wow. Did you ever try looking in a mirror and doing something? <laughs> That's trippy. But since I'm short, I will does make it easier to see what I might have missed. Thank you, Tom. All right, while we're at it, let's just scrape these. And for all of those here that are new, I'm going to explain why we do this. The paint strip off the side, which is great. However, if there's too much paint that is stripped off and it's just laying there underneath, which is why we tape it so that the colors don't get all over the underside um, the paint will draw down from the weight of the drips and it will take some of your paint off and we don't want that I mean I imagine it'd be kind of cool at some point but I definitely have gotten disappointed have been disappointed when I didn't scrape enough and you know then I ended up with a lot of my paint sliding so we don't want that all right, so let's just torch it one more time. Okay, I'm going to use my flashlight. I can't remember who I learned this from. I think it was Tammy Anderson, who I love and adore. She's like my sister from another mister. And I love her tutorials. She just, she's amazing. I've only been doing this since the pandemic started last year. And I learned so much from her. The Massey Boys, Mina Villagas, 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 potato, potato. And she's gotten some great tips. So we're going to put the light on here and we're gonna look sideways, all right? And see if we see any bugars or any air bubbles that the torch didn't take care of. Look how the shimmer in that brown base. I love it. I love it. And then we look from the side. Oh, just a spot here. That's cool. And this one got a little hinky here on this side. So we're just gonna blend that a little bit. This is gonna look so strange. I really like what's happened on the sides here. The coverage is great. And it just, oh, here's another one. Flashlight can be your best friend, I gotta tell ya. You can also, if you've got things, if you've got things missing on your side, you can also just take your stick put a little paint on it and then either go here or you can put it along the edge and just let it drip down, which is great. Another, you know, fun technique that's simple, like right here. Okay. So we have not as much negative space as we would, but we definitely had enough paint. So that was cool. Okay. I'm looking at this one more time. I don't think it needs another torch. I think we're good to go. So, you want to bring this down a little closer? 
or is it is it close enough? Take a look in the viewfinder. And this is the dry result of the one we did today. Still lots of shimmer. It dried beautifully. A few cells that are kind of fun. And there you have it. I want to show you the dried results from the first video. It dried beautifully. Let me just bring you in for a little close up here. Oh, these colors and these shimmers. I love them. Awesome. Well, that's sparkle done. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. Also the notification bell. That way you'll know when I post the next video. So for all of you who bring sparkle to my life every day, cheers to you. Thank you. Go and have a great day and remember, keep your sparkle on and share it with someone that you really love. Bye-bye.